Hi, thank you for checking out our training on how to inspect the public files at your local TV station. This training is brought to you by Free Press, a national, nonpartisan organization working for a better media. I'm Libby Reinisch. This training is part of our broader efforts to educate and inform the public about the valuable information that's been tucked away in filing cabinets at TV stations all over the country. We're conducting this work in partnership with the Sunlight Foundation and the New America Foundation. After this training, you'll have everything you need to visit a local TV station, collect information from the public files, and analyze the information that you find. We'll go over what to bring, what to collect, and what to do if you run into challenges. But first, a little bit of background. Broadcasters receive free licenses to use the public airwaves for television and radio stations. In return, they have agreed to serve the public's news and information needs. And they're supposed to document how they fulfill their obligations in a file maintained at the station and make these documents available for public inspection. The public file also contains a bunch of folders known as the political file. In the 21st century, these files should be made available online, but for years, broadcasters have fought the Federal Communications Commission's attempts to make these files available to the public. The FCC recently ruled that television stations must put the information in their public and political files online. But there's a catch. While all stations must digitize their public files this year, only the major network stations, NBC, Fox, ABC, and CBS, in the country's largest media markets, will be required to post their political files online in 2012. All other stations can delay posting until 2014. The problem, of course, is that some of the stations which will receive the most money in political ad sales will not be covered by this rule. And because the rule only covers the major networks, all Spanish language stations are also left out. So for now, the only way to get this information from those TV stations is to visit them in person and collect the files ourselves. That's why we're recruiting an army of muckraking volunteers to visit their local TV stations and collect political advertising records. Then we'll make the files available online in time for the November elections. Now let's get down to brass tacks. What is a public file and what's in it? All broadcast stations are required to maintain a public file containing information like how the station claims to serve community needs, information about political ad sales, and letters from the community. These public files are located at the station's primary studio and generally take up a large filing cabinet. Some stations keep their files on a computer instead, in which case they must make a workstation available for visitors. The public file contains multiple files that are known as the political file. These files include information about political ad sales, the names of directors, CEOs, and board members of advertisers, and covers any political or issue advertising purchased at the station. So let's go over the basic logistics of a visit. Every station is different, but there are some definite commonalities. Before you visit your local TV station, we recommend you make an appointment. Appointments are not required, but we recommend them because we find that stations are more receptive when they know you're coming and they can connect you with the best person to help you find what you're looking for. You'll want to bring a few things with you. Bring a camera or cell phone to take pictures. Bring money for photocopies. Sometimes stations will make copies for free, but they are within their rights to charge you a reasonable rate for copies. That generally ranges from 10 cents to 25 cents a page. Some stations we have dealt with charge up to a dollar per page. So it's a good idea to bring a camera for backup. And of course, bring a pen and paper, or whatever your equivalent is, to take notes. Also, don't forget to print out our checklist and bring it with you to your visit. Free Press is working in partnership with organizations like the Sunlight Foundation and the New America Foundation to collect and analyze these files from stations across the country. The checklist tells you everything we're looking for and what to collect. So let's talk about what to do when you get to the station. When you go up to the front desk, they may ask you to sign in. They may also ask for your organizational affiliation, but you're not required to provide it. 
Keep in mind that it's quite possible the front desk person has never had a member of the public come to inspect the public files before. They may be confused or a little wary. So be polite and kind and remember that they're likely inexperienced. There's a lot of information that the FCC requires to be maintained in these public files, and we're only interested in a few specific areas. But if you'd like to know more about the full range of information contained in these files, we recommend you check out the FCC's official guide, The Public and Broadcasting. As I said before, every station is different, but let's go through the checklist and talk about the information you'll be collecting. The first piece of information you'll want to collect is called the Issues Programs List. That's the technical term for the file where stations record exactly what programming they air that serves community needs. These look very different from station to station, ranging from a few pages to a few hundred. Stations are required to file these lists four times a year. Ask for a photocopy of the most recent quarter. Now let's talk about the political file. The station's political file is contained within the public file. It contains a range of information regarding political advertising that has been purchased at the station, including the dates and times that the advertising aired, the rate charged, and the name of the candidate referenced. The file should also contain detailed information about who purchased the advertisement, whether it's a campaign, a PAC, a super PAC, or a third-party organization. The political file itself is typically a filing cabinet with several different folders in it, likely one for each campaign, PAC, super PAC, or third-party group that purchased political advertising. The information PACs, super PACs, and third-party groups are required to disclose can help us learn who is paying for ads, how much they're spending for spots, and fills in the gap of information that the Federal Elections Commission doesn't track at all which is state races, gubernatorial races, local ballot initiatives, and really anything that's not happening on the federal level. Stations are required to maintain two years of political advertising records. Sometimes all the files for one buyer will be in one folder. Other times, those files will be broken into different folders based on the weeks that the ads were purchased in. Free Press and other transparency organizations are working to collect the political files from stations all over the country. We're working to collect the complete political files from stations in key swing states and make them available online before the November elections. To do that, we need your help. So let's take a look at a sample political file. We'll go over all of the pieces of information you'll find inside, how to identify them, and how to analyze the information. We're going to take a look at three different pieces of information you'll find in the political file. The agreement form, the order, and the as-run report. This is called an agreement form, or sometimes an NAB form, and it's a requirement of the political file. There are two kinds of agreement forms. One for non-candidate issue advertisements, and one for candidate advertisements. So this form has a lot of information about the name of the ad agency, the name of the advertiser itself, it asks, does the programming communicate a message relating to any political matter of national importance? And in this case, the advertiser has selected no, indicating that the advertisement pertains to a local issue. On the second page, uh, you'll find information about what type of organization it is, um, whether it's a corporation, a committee, an association, or an other unincorporated group. And you'll see that the form also asks for the names, offices, and addresses of the chief executive officers, directors, and authorized agents of the entity. Uh, in this case, that information is attached on a separate sheet. So you'll see here the names of the board of directors um, and the uh, address information for the advertiser. Although this information is required in the political file, in our experience, it's sometimes missing. For the most part, these visits go off without a hitch, but let's go over some of the challenges you might encounter. Sometimes the staff doesn't understand what information you're looking for. If you're not getting what you need, be sure to ask if there's someone else that may be able to help, and refer to our checklist for the exact names of the information you're trying to collect. 
In some cases, staff may be unfriendly or wary of you. Just be polite and non-confrontational. The more you can clarify that you're trying to learn about your local station, as opposed to trying to get them in trouble, the less awkward it will be. You may be charged for photocopies. Stations are allowed to charge for copies within reason. It's a vague guideline, but if you think you're being ridiculously overcharged, take pictures instead and be sure to document the stated rate on your checklist. We need your help to make these political files available online in time for the November elections. Please sign up to visit your local TV station today. Thank you.